Welcome to a quick demo um, on using a curve uh, in Unreal. Um, right here I've got kind of the stock third person example um, set up. Although I am, just for illustration purposes, I am using a, um, a different um, blend space for my character. I'm using the, let's see, this is the Sword and Shield Anim Set Pro uh, Classic Straight Movement. Um, it's created by Kubald. He does some really great stuff. It's on the marketplace. Um, so anyway, I have this wired up. Just I'm really just using this walk part right here. Um, if we were to look at the character, um, I've mapped you know, the axis uh, clearly is going from 0 to 1, from move forward to move right. And that maps into the movement input, just like the stock one does. But then I'm also sending this into the walk forward axis of that um, blend space. So right now when we look at it, it looks like this. And if he's walking full speed, it looks great. It works great. His feet, you can see, are kind of matched to the ground. But the problem is, like when I walk in slow, it's not quite mapped right, right? I'd rather have it, his feet are doing a lot of sliding there, right? So the goal of this is to fix that. And, and one way to fix this is using a curve. Um, the curve itself is generally used in all sorts of situations. And this is just, I thought, a great example of one use of the curve. So let's go ahead and, and, and map that in. So to do that, we're in our third person character. And if you notice, you know what, what really we're trying to say is, uh, instead of sending zero to one, one to one to walk forward, I kind of want to send, make make him walk a little bit um, faster when he's walking slow. So if like, he's walking slow like this, instead of sliding on the ground, right, I want to kind of speed up the animation. Okay. So if we create a new variable and call it like the locomotion curve, um, we can set its type over here to curve. And it's a curve float reference. And uh, that's a built-in uh, type. Well, it's kind of, a, I couldn't find a lot of documentation on this, which is why I'm creating the video. Um, we can go ahead and create a new curve asset. And let's call it the uh, loco curve one, because you could actually you know, have multiple of these. Um, and if we save that and then open it, it looks like wherever put it this and so uh, what we want to do if we want to just have no effect at all like a one-to-one -one mapping we can just do a, a linear line so if we can add a one float here and we'll add another one we look kind of one-to-one -one, so this will be mapping if you kind of envision you know this being the one-to-one -one unit square this is saying whenever I'm you know inputting a uh, uh, 0.5, it's going to return a 0.5. When I input a 1.0, it's going to return a 1.0. So really, this isn't going to have any effect. It's kind of like a test version, right? So the way we use the curve is we can pull this out, we get it, and then we can say uh, get float value. And um, so if we pass in uh, float value, it'll return the curve value. So again, right now, to reiterate, since it's a straight line, we pass in 0.25, we get back 0.25, because uh, it's a linear line right there. So if I play it, we're still going to have the same problem as before, just to validate. So when I walk really slow, see how his feet are sliding on the ground? It's because the animation's playing too slow. I, what I want is I want the animation to play faster, um, even though it's I have the joystick barely moving, right? So to do that, let's just take a strategic point here. Let's say right here. Let's say I want it to play faster. So in other words, when I input like 0.25 here, I really want it to maybe jump up to like 0.4 or something. So we'll add a curve here. And you, you can actually make it more of a you know gradual curve if you want. So we'll just kind of bump it up just a little bit. We don't want to go too far. Well, maybe we do. Let's, let's bump it up a lot, and then I'll show you how we can kind of scale back. So now when we run it, you can see and I'm walking, actually, it's pretty good. So when he's walking slow, it's almost too much. See how his feet are now sliding the other way? The animation is faster than what I really want. It's a lot, lot, lot better. So then you can scale it back just a tad. So pull it in just a little bit. So now the effect isn't quite as strong. Now it's almost like his feet are going to be too fast, right? See, so we're back to the other problem there. So he comes forward. There's a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's definitely much better than it was, right? So when he walks... 
Um, his feet are on the ground, and when he walks fast, his feet are on the ground. In between here, it's still, I would say, a little bit too fast, maybe on that one. So, you know, if we wanted it to come back faster, we could put another curve here. So, um, you know, pull it in a little bit more. So it, it returns back to the line, or back to that. Remember, because the base curve is like right here. So if we want it to kind of return back, little faster then polish it a little more so now when he walks fast he walks fast when he walks slow he walks slow so it, it definitely keeps his feet on the ground and uh, so that's it for the curve again this is just it's not limited to being used in this manner whatsoever think of it as a, a black box you pass in a number you get a number out and it'll transform it based on this curve so it's just generally useful um, in the past I've also used it for like a, a, an engine a rocket engine uh, mapping so it's like different engines based on the same input have different outputs right so we could have a different curve that you know inflected in and, and, and then would have a different result so hopefully uh, you know you can add it to a, another tool in your arsenal of unreal um, and uh, that's it we'll see you later